Hello, and thank you for joining me for this dose of virtual vitamin Z. My name is Sandy, and I'm an education specialist, and I am joined today by Jess, who is a bird zookeeper. Thanks so much for being with us here today, Jess. Thanks, Sandy. I'm happy to be here. So today, we're going to talk about ostriches, and ostriches are the world's largest bird, and they can weigh up to 350 pounds, which is quite a lot. Um, they are flightless, and they do live in certain areas of Africa. Jess, could you tell us how many ostriches are under the care of us, of under our care here at the zoo? Yeah, so here at the Detroit Zoo, we care for one adult male ostrich, and his name is Hannibal. That he shares the yard with the eland, and they all get along. Yeah, he shares this habitat with two elands named Brad and Clover. There are also two white storks in this yard, and we have a saddlebill stork in this yard as well. Um, and in general, they all coexist very well together. Um, these animals have a lot of space to move around, and they have ways of communicating with one another. If you know, if the eland, for example, feel like Hannibal is kind of coming in their bubble, or vice versa, uh, they have ways of indicating that to one another. And then they can kind of go about their way and um, do what they need to do in the space provided. Awesome. How old is Hannibal? Hannibal is about 20 years old. Okay. We don't have the exact hatch date for him, but we have a very good estimate, so about 20. Can you tell me a little about his personalities or maybe different behaviors we might see if we come to visit him at the zoo? Yeah. So um, working with Hannibal is extremely rewarding. He is a very inquisitive individual. He's very quirky. Um, and you really see a lot of his personality come through when he's displaying those natural behaviors. So a couple of my favorite behaviors to observe in him are um, in the summer, he will seek out dry areas in the habitat and he will dust bathe. So when he does that, he drops down from a standing position and uses his wings to kind of fold up the dirt and dust onto his plumage. And um, ostrich actually do this because they lack a preening gland. So in other birds, they will use that preening gland, which is at the base of their body. They'll rub their beak on it and get oils on it and then use that to uh, groom their feathers. But since ostr ostriches don't have that gland, um, by putting the dust through their feathers, that helps them to keep dry and healthy. Um, so, you know, when he's dust, dust bathing, you really see that personality come through. He might get distracted by something really quick, um, kind of straighten his neck up, direct his attention, and then go back to bathing. Um, it can be really fun to see those types of things. Uh, we also see seasonally a courtship dance behavior in him. So, um, especially in the spring and throughout the summer, he is uh, kind of in territorial mode where he would be defending a nest. And so he will definitely seek out animal care staff members and sometimes visitors and approach them and start displaying his courtship dance. So when he does that, he moves his feathers back and forth in a rhythmic pattern. His neck kind of gets going in an S-shaped pattern. It's very mesmerizing. It's very cool to watch. And is that, that would be how he would attract a female and then defend his nest is from there too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he would have a territory with his nest in it that he built. He actually has one on Habitat. Um, he kind of tucked it away in this little alcove over here, so it's hard for visitors to see. Um, off to the Let's left see. side of the screen here, yeah. If you, it, I'm just gonna... Huh. And so they kick out a big saucer-shaped hole, essentially, in the ground, and um, the surrounding area is what he would be kind of uh, defending, and then the courtship dance to attract the females. And so you had mentioned the females. So the females are not as large as he would be, right? Correct. The females are a little bit smaller in stature. They also have uh, sexual dimorphism in their plumage. So the females actually are a little bit more camouflage. They're more of a sandy, dusty color, whereas he has the very prominent uh, dark body feathers and then the lighter appendages. Awesome. Is he out in, on Habitat all year round? Generally, yes. Um, ostrich are very weather hardy birds, so most days out of the year he does have the option to go out on Habitat. 
Uh, our main concern is in the winter if there are days where there is a lot of ice coverage that then becomes a safety mm -hmm. issue. Um, so in those cases, if there ever is too much ice, we access him to his holding yard, which is attached to his indoor stall area. And in his holding yard, we're able to manage that um, closer. So even if ice forms there, we can break it up, we can put straw down, we can make sure it's safe. So he still has the opportunity to get some fresh air, step outside, and then go back inside if he wants to. Sure. So speaking of holding yards and his indoor space, do you share that space with him? No, so animal care staff does not share the same space as Hannibal. Um, we have to consider, you know, the fact that ostrich have extremely strong legs and they do use their kicks as a defense mechanism. And knowing that and also knowing, you know, that he does go through these seasonal territorial um, behaviors and um, demeanors, it's just best and, um, in his best interest and our best interest to protect, use protected contact in our um, everyday routine. So in doing so, we always have some form of barrier between us and the bird, and that just really reduces any chance of risk, and it works well. I mean, he does seem like he's pretty big. So how big is he and how much does he weigh? Um, male ostriches can get up to about nine feet tall, which is just a little bit shorter than a basketball hoop, which would be about 10 feet. Um, Hannibal, when he fully extends his neck, is at about seven, eight feet tall. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as far as weight goes, he weighs 284 pounds. Which I recently found out, a refrigerator weighs about 200 pounds. So he weighs just a little bit more than a refrigerator. Wow. Yeah, he is a big bird. <laughs> yeah, <for sure>. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see right now he seems to be grazing. Mm -hmm. What is it that he eats? So we offer him daily five and a half pounds of a ratite diet. He also gets one pound of cracked corn. He gets about a cup of uh, varied produce. It's different every day. We offer him different types of browse, um, especially in the winter months. And when you say browse, what, what does that mean? So those are different um, foli foliage types that are safe for him to consume. Okay. Um, and then of course, when he is out in the yard, as he's doing now, he's doing a lot of grazing eating grasses, roots. Um, ostrich also will sometimes eat pebbles and gravel and that helps them break down things that are in their gizzard. So um, big bird, he consumes a lot. It sounds like it. I mean, at over six pounds of food a day. Yep. Which makes sense. He does weigh a refrigerator. So yep. Well, so <laughs> it kind of tracks. Yep. Um, so Hannibal has a really interesting story. Can you tell me a little bit about how he came to be here at the zoo? Sure. Um, Hannibal started out living in a garage in Illinois. Um, he was living amongst some other ostrich chicks. And at some point he was confiscated from that situation. He was rescued by a sanctuary in Michigan where he lived temporarily until he came to live out his life at the Detroit Zoo in 2015. And we're really happy that he's here. Um, you know, having all of this space, he's able to do the things that he needs to do, and he's able to be an ostrich. And um, so it's it's a success story for sure. But absolutely. And it doesn't. I don't feel like a garage is a great place for an ostrich to be. I mean, definitely not. There's not any place for them to graze. There's, yeah. It's hard ground. Probably yep. not a lot of air circulation. Very unsafe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So was he a pet? Do you know? Uh, I believe it was a pet scenario. Um, I can't answer that for sure, but it uh, seems, seems that it's it was a pet scenario like or leading towards that, yes. I mean, with being such a large animal, he doesn't seem like a, a prime candidate to be no. sharing the space with. No, there's definitely, I mean, there's the factors about, you know, safety with mm -hmm. it being such a large animal in a pet owner situation that could potentially be very risky for the animal or the owner. Um, and then, you know, just the resources that he needs as far as food and water, veterinarian care. Mm -hmm. um, that would, those are just the core items that would be very challenging in a pet scenario. So it's, it's just not ideal. Right, absolutely. Well, if you want to see Hannibal, come and visit us at the Detroit Zoo and you can see him in the African watering hole back by the Japanese macaques. 
And thanks so much for joining us for this dose of virtual vitamin Z. Thank you so much, Jess, for joining us no today. No problem. Oh, we're still, we're still alive. I can't get it to stop.